Amen. My name is Franklin Philip, and I am the chairperson for this morning's proceedings. Let me welcome you this morning on behalf of the members of the Referees Association and on behalf of the Southern Football Association because this lecture discussion was organized in conjunction with both bodies. Thank you very much for taking the time and I, I hope that you are going to learn something from this experience and more than that, notice lecture discussion, which means that we expect contributions from the floor. Your program says rational for the assembly. And uh, although I was instrumental in organizing this, Um, I am hoping that people will share the, some of my, my views and um, an, an artist. Uh, before I proceed any further, um, I should make a few house announcements. The toilets are located to the, to the back. The gents go to the left, the ladies go to the right. I would like to implore you at this time to please take off your cell phones or to put them on some mode that will not disturb the proceedings. Let me make sure that mine is... behind this <coughs> to assist with the interpretation of the laws of the game because if you don't know the laws of the game then you will not be able to function properly to provide an avenue for dialogue between and among between and among servants of the game. We are servants of the game. The game doesn't belong to any one of us. It doesn't belong to the referees. It doesn't belong to the coaches. It doesn't belong to the public. To serve as a platform for the resolution of problems. And this, and one does not expect that there will be no problems in spite of occasions such as this, there are going to be problems. What we, what I think could happen is that we could attempt to minimize the problems. And if and when problems arise, then we could sit together and reason out the problem. To, to better understand and appreciate each other's role in order to serve the players and the game. And the, game. And, and the main thing here is the players. Ladies and gentlemen, the main thing here is the players. And I will come back to that. To sensitize referees and coaches about their responsibilities and so on. And my thinking is that we have in our possession young players who are depending on us. But if we don't know how, what we are doing, if we don't know how to relate to each other, how are we going to help them? 
and I have been emphasizing because I've been talking with the two groups of referees and uh, the SFA where, wherever I could, that this session is about the game. This is about the game. And I want you to bear that in mind. We are here to share. And if you look at your program, way down you see what's next. When we discuss as far as we could go this morning, then when we get there, we will see what is going to happen next. Um, so that's the rationale for this calling you out this morning. Thought there would have been more people here, but if one or two people could be influenced at this session, who knows, it might go a very long way. You may be responsible for producing the next latter P or the next white yo. The person might come across you. Who knows? Now, let me just familiarize you with the... Now, before I familiarize you with the, with the rest of the program, at the head table, we have Mr. Iza Mohammed or Mohammed Iza. Right. Mr. Rudy Thomas. And Mr. Osman Downer. Three very responsible, experienced people who have been involved in football for a very long time. At this juncture, I would like to invite the president of the SFE, Mr. Rudy Thomas, to bring greetings. Colleagues at the head table, coaches, referees, and I must make a special mention and acknowledge the presence of Mr. Anthony uh, a benefactor, an interested developer of football in South Trinidad. And I must say, I was pleased to hear Mr. Cook of the integral role you are playing in this assembly today. I, I know the official session for thank yous will fully acknowledge your role in today's proceedings. On behalf of the SFA, I'd like to say how pleased we are that a session like this has been organized. And I am personally pleased as the president of the SFA, as a football administrator, and more importantly, as a person, as a spectator of football. Because I can tell you from experience, in my role years ago as the manager of the Trintop and United, Trintop United Petro Trin teams, we found it was important before every season started that we ask one of our referee friends to come to have a discussion with the team, our full squad, because we recognize a lot of contention goes on on the field in that short 90 minutes because the officials, that is the referees and the assistants, the people on the bench and the players are not on the same page. So what we try to do is get the players, the most important people, because 
when in the heat of a game, when, when you feel you are hard done by some referee and he decision, it could affect your game. And we felt it was important for players to understand better not only the rules of the game, but more importantly, how referees thought in terms of officiating. Because it, up to today, it amazes me that one small rule, I am sure a lot of players are not aware of, coaches don't seem to utilize it. The simple rule that you can't be offside for a true. It could give you so much advantage as a player if you were aware of something like that. So today I'm happy that what is started today, and mark my words, what is started today would continue where, especially the coaches, because coaches, you are responsible for your players. You are responsible for your players. And if you can get them to understand more about the rules by which they play, they would get more time to concentrate on how they play. So I want to thank the Mr. Issa, the technical director, the referees, the, the South Referees Committee, Mr. Cook, who thought that a session like this would be significant. I also, I, I feel gratified when I see the mix of participants. Seen some old bulls in the back, seen some very young coaches, player coaches, right? So, and in between. So, I know that we are starting on a right foot, and I hope that between the SFA technical development department and the referees, a critical activity like this would be done on a continuous basis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Before I proceed any further, I want to acknowledge um, one or two people sitting in the audience where we have heard about Mr. Cook. Mr. Cook is really a tennis coach, but he has been sponsoring, supporting football in the SFA for a very long time. And the idea was of this, for this, this idea came up on New Year's Day. Mr. Cook, myself, Sir Howard Spencer, who is not here, and Mr. Mohammed Iza all agreed on having something like this. So we really have to thank Mr. Cook and uh, his ideas and it's something that I think that we all need to bear in mind that if, if we can all pitch in a little then something is going to happen with the football. If we can all give something, something is going to happen. I want to recognize Mr. Branca. Mr. Branca, could you please put up, show your hand. Mr. Branca is a past referee, still working in the, with the SFA and among the, the referees after a number of years. Next to him is Mr. Francis Joachim, another referee, Mr. Joachim. And all these guys would have passed through the trenches. And to my far left, Mr. Harrington who is also a member of the Referees Association. And we also have in our presence an ex-national under-19 or under-20 player, Mr. Gerald Homer. 
And Mr. Homer has a lot. He may not say a lot, but he is one of the persons who is not really satisfied with the state of football. And we speak about it all the time. And I want to thank him for coming. And I hope he will share some of his thoughts with us. So now we, we, we are going to hear from the thoughts or the insights of the coach. We are going to hear what the coach wants to do when he comes to a game, before the game, after the game. We will probably hear how he responds to certain situations during the game, whether it is to the referee, to the players, to the next team. Ladies and gentlemen, to share some thoughts on the operations of the coach, please welcome Mr. Mohammed Misa. Members of the head table, coaches, uh, referees, and my tennis, good tennis coach here, Anthony Cook. Um, you know, we worked together at one time at the ministry. And so we, we established a very good uh, good relationship. He's a strong follower of football. Only that I just go to where he likes football. Right. Um, let me first say that this is really an interesting uh, topic, uh, the, the insight of the coach. What is a coach? A coach job. It's one of the hardest jobs in the world. And for many reasons. You are being judged on the field of play. You have been viewed by millions of people when your team go on the field. Your team depicts the coach. What your team do is how people judge the coach. For example, when you play and you lose, the people in the community want to kill you. Your players sometimes want to kill you. But if you're a teacher, what you do? Your daughter, your son, feel you see exam, what you say? She does. You are a referee, you make a bad decision and you lose, they pull the referee in a room and tell them you know that is a wrong penalty. The result stands. But you want to get killed for that decision. So that is why as coaches sometimes we got to be very careful. We spend days and nights preparing our players for a game. And just prior to the game, you know, one in the dressing room, the referee come in a kind of arrogant way and try to disorganize, disorganize your preparation just before the game. Sometimes it rubs on the coach, it rubs on to the players. Decisions are made in the field of play. As coaches, wrong or right, we don't always accept the decisions of the referee. You always feel that the referee is wrong. We always feel that the referee is in, in, in the decisions. And there's um, something that the referee is hiding behind in the opinion of the referee. In the opinion. That is what shelters the referee today. So they lose no wrong. Cannot make no wrong. It's their opinion. And that's what, as coaches and players, we have to look at. And I want, as all the coaches, try to understand that. Try to understand. Once you understand that you'll be in the referee, you laugh. Sometimes you get off the bench, we make noise, we use uh, unpleasant remarks, we be caution for it, we pay the price for it. And I always say one thing as coaches, you must know your officials. Very important, you must know your officials, you must know what they like and what they dislike. As always say to one referee, he likes teamless. If I play like him in the stadium, I try to be playing by the gate and give him teamless. He likes teamless. Right? So, you know, and, and, and it is what you feel best that all the control. And, and as a coach, you always want to have the referee in your corner. You always want to have the referee in your corner. So they probably will get away with some nice, uh, something to feel they will get away with. 
but it's not always you have been fortunate uh, to get away with it. The referees, um, sometimes you see we make decisions that we don't like it. One of the concerns I can say on behalf of the group is the interpretation of the rules. You play in South, there's an interpretation. You go to Central, there's a different interpretation. You go to the North, there's a different interpretation. You go to the East, there's a different interpretation. But no talk. If you go to Bigo or you go to Eastern counties in a different part of the world, and I am saying, as coaches, it's bothering me to see the decisions are made by the referees in different regions of Trinidad and Tobago. And I personally would like to see the day when the referees body could come together and have one interpretation of the rules. And that's why coaches and then the anger and get home. Because this happens so that they don't go fit. And when they go in the east of the the referee doing fit and giving red card and that kind of and that kind of decisions. I think sometimes the referee are a little bit hasty in terms of the cards. You must know the level of the competition, how effective as uh, and I call it a soft card could affect a team. Because we as coaches, what well, is our objective? To win. We want to get results. And sometimes the results do favor us because of the decisions that the officials make on the field. Unfortunately, sometimes we go into a community that is very hostile. You may have a game of in Lavantel. The decision that the referee will make in Lavantel, they will make it in South. They will make it in South. Right? Don't worry, you're probably going to grab or you're going to fight a bad for a game. And it's a different kind of officiating as if it's the difference of skin apart. And that's another point I just want to raise. So sometimes the things that they will do for in skin apart, they will not do for in a place like Barco or a place like Diamond. They wouldn't do for it. And they know the reason why. They don't want to go after some ball game. Interaction between the referee and coaches was a nice thing. In today's game, the referee seems to have more fear to interact with coaches after a game. They could find out um, a decision, they're not happy about it, and the referee explained it, this is that way. You learn that, you talk to your players about it. But in today's game, there's no interaction between the referees and the coaches, and it's something I want to see um, come back in, into, the, into the game. There are plenty of young coaches now who are not aware uh, the laws of the game, and they need to learn it. We need to see the referees making the effort to come to the regions and speak to the coaches and players in the regions as to educate them as to the laws of the game. Plenty of play, people play, plenty of people coaching, and they don't know the, the rules of the game. And this creates a lot of havoc when something happens on the field of play as to how to treat with it. So the only way to treat with it is anger. Start to get on. And then I see a community could be a little bit hostile. They support the code because they do nothing better than that. And they just wanted something to react. So you find sometimes when they go to a game, you see how crowd react and they want to show up, but they want to show up on a referee. And you got the anger about the result. So we even though as coaches, we need to educate the people in our community, our supporters, as the as, um, some of the rules and the regulations uh, about, the game, about the game. Coaches, when you play, when you lose control, you have your training sessions to correct your mistakes. I have the opinion that much has not been done in terms of referees when they, when they make an error. The media handle situations in a room. Many times I pass by the steel and I see referees with all the leaders running, running around the field sprinting. But I do see a referee, somebody can do referee through his position and play. Hands, things happen, and referee just not in a position to see it. And then you have to pay the price for it. So, coaches' um, views are that. Some, and, and, and I would just afford in anybody's garden 
But there's an opinion that I, I share that when two teams play, nobody beats nobody. Nobody beats nobody. The referee decides who win a game or who draw the game. And I can, I, and that is from my experience. And I keep saying all the time, if I have to play Desmond, Desmond will beat me, I will beat Desmond. The man in the middle or the chief officer will decide if Desmond should win or I should win. And I think that is not fair for the sport. We invest too much as coaches in our teams for these decisions to be made or games to be decided by officials. The situation sometimes about, um, I can talk about officiating, you go to a game sometimes and you have two officials. And from my experience, the referee will go to the visiting team and ask them to provide an assistant. They come in immediately. I am the only team, I am for sure. Show, and you ask any visiting team to provide an official. I think that is not fair. Because when home by me, I in charge. I should have the first option to say, no, I can't provide an assistant. But don't go to the visiting team and ask them to provide somebody, and I am the only team. The, the, sometimes again, we look at the at it on time, and this is something you know, I, I, I really have some concern about. Sometimes they go to a game and say, "I'm coach." There's no injury. At the end of the game, there might be just be changes, and it's surprised to see sometimes the times that they put up on a board for at it on time and the time that we play for the added on time. Sometimes we sit down as coaches and say, well, when, when there's a big team underneath, the added on time favors the big team. If you're underneath, they get good added on time to recover. If it's a small team, you wouldn't get a same added on time and you wouldn't get that added on time to recover. I think it's something that needs to be, uh, to be organized. We need to look into that. Other than that, uh, I, you know, I just say that as coaches, we need to, to have a little more interactions uh, with the officials because everybody views it differently. There's supposed to be a, a calm down time, um, especially when you play the Super League or the, the, the PFL. I think that the officials sometimes don't adhere uh, to the calm down time. And it's very important sometimes in that come home time that the inspections sometimes are teams are done late and you've been robbed your 20 minutes uh, of warm time. Because for some reason somebody is late and they just can't make the inspection in time and you lost a couple of minutes of warm time. It is very much, which is very, very important to the, to, the team, to the team. So I don't want to go much further, but I just say I want to glad for the ability here to share some of the views as one of the senior coaches here. Uh, there's other coaches here to understand the kind of things that you have to deal with uh, as a young coach coming up in, into the football arena. And we've got to be careful in terms of our preparation because I can tell you from experience and I made that point a couple of weeks ago um, as coaches if we don't prepare our team properly we wouldn't get the results that we want sometimes we just want to win and the easiest thing to do as a coach when you lose is to go back in the community and tell you tell you tell the people in the community or your members of your club the referee again the referee is the easiest excuse of the coach. I can tell you that. You play bad, you lose. And you go home and you tell your madam or you tell your children, but well, that referee, well, God, we end up in the east again. That referee, that man. Once you referee, you can't win. So then, though, sometimes we have to try to refrain from that, 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 that excuse. 
whether the referee good or the referee bad, we should not use the referee on that thing. And I always say to coaches that the thing about football is to score goals. If you know you're going up in the east and you're going to meet referees in that there, make sure you have enough goals that he can give them a penalty or two to win. And I just explained that Sunday goal, you know, my team would play in the second and we would need three to. The referee gave a penalty 90 plus time. The game had a three all they come up the field from playing by the referee. And I have to say no. If we had scored all the chances that we had, we would have been six goals. So if she gave two penalty, we would have been two goals still better. Right, so I, I said my comment and I don't want to fall into take it as anything nagging, but I made the decision and I stay with it that the referee decide who win and who lose. Thank you. Thank you very much, Visa. And um, Visa, as I said, I'm awful. And I noticed Mr. Donner was writing. I would prefer to hear some comments or questions from the floor rather than sum up what was just said. So I want to open the floor on out to questions. If you have a few questions, uh, Mr. Mohamed Eza, please. Thank you. 
cannot walk out well in the game. So all what they say is that you say I understand the time to just put in the efforts, but I would really appreciate also the time and the efforts referees put in. As a matter of fact, I used to be across the there's a whole eight message I come across one thing. I want to be here to hear and I show you my commitment to this. So same way I push it all here. I want to do that appreciation too because the game can't be those patients. You know, as I say, not the referee's game, it's not the player's game, it's not the fans game, it's all what game. So don't put us in. I mean yes, they can say because the referees make bad decisions. I I don't want to protect them. They just happen. But understand that it's only human being and nobody leaving no house. I thought I'll pay men about here. Nobody leaving no house. Hey, if I don't play the game, I'm going to go against them. That ain't happening. I'm talking poor. So, it's just like me, but you know, take it in good, 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 Thank you very much. And, and ladies and gentlemen, the more Jesus spoke, the more I felt convinced that we need to have not this session alone, but more sessions like this. Because he said, I'm more fully fine, man. You. He said that the, the team depicts the coach. People judge the coach by what they see going on on the field. Referees disturb the preparations of the team. And the people here to hear that are not really here. It's just little things that you would not see in the law book that we need to share here in order to help the game and to help one another. That we hide behind, I say we, because I'm a referee. We hide behind this terminology in the opinion of the referee. 
he advised the coaches that it's a good thing to have the referee in your corner. We're not, I'm certainly not talking about bribing the referee and so on. But just make sure that you try and deal with the referee evenly. Hope I am quoting him or interpreting him properly. He spoke about referees refereeing differently according to the areas. And, and these are things, just things for people to think about and ponder on them and probably see what could be done right, to eradicate that impression. Education of the supporters said more could be done to correct the errors of the referee and too much investment of time, money, resources, too much investment of these are made and then you, 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 you go to a game and you do not get what you want. Those things, I'm not saying what he said is right or wrong, I'm saying that these are observations and therefore we need to ponder on them. And, and when I heard him speaking that way, you know, I, I, it's a, I told myself that it's a pity that there aren't more people here. And we all have a stake in the game. We all have a stake in the game. And um, what is my stake? I, I played the game at a fairly high level. Okay? I play the game at a fairly high level. Some of you are too young to know about the league. I represented the Arima Football League. I was called up for SFA, and that was another experience. I played in Palaseco for a little while under Edgar, Edgar Vidal, Vidal with players like Ed, um, Alwyn Ferguson and um, And this boy who eventually made the national team. Pumping Jack, somebody called his name. Pumping Jack. Rob Ray Roberts. Okay. I played in Faisabad. Finally, Paul was the goalkeeper then. A upcoming goalkeeper. Those were my playing days, basically. I played with Leon Carpet, who was invited, but he's not here this morning when I came to San Fernando. And then after I fin was finished playing, I became a referee. I was an international assistant. But more than that, but more than that, I was an international assistant among the first set of international assistants, formerly linesmen. I was among the first named international assistants. I refereed in the National League and I refereed Intercal South Zone Final, the East Zone Final, the North Zone Final, the National Intercal Final. I was an assistant in National Intercal Final. I was an assistant on the FA Trophy Semi Final. I just trying to, I'm not boasting of myself. I'm just trying to explain to you how I came to this point. Okay? To want to have something like this. Because just like you, you have an interest in the game. You have a love for the game. You are a stakeholder. We all are stakeholders. And one of the things that, that, that impressed me some time ago was listening to the Jamaican coach. A Jamaican coach, one of the, na the Jamaican national coaches, was on television with Simon Koskel, and they were discussing football. And he said, if he has a game, and he's having trouble with a player, and he was, at, he and the other friend, 
other coach against whom he was playing the next day. He said if he had a problem, he would call the coach and ask him what to do with the players. What to do with the player. You hear that? He is going to play a team tomorrow. He has a player and he wants to make a decision on him. But the other coach is his friend. They are playing tomorrow. He said he will call that coach for advice. And what was his reason? He said, because we are all working towards the same thing. They are all working towards the same thing. And that is what we are going to try to do. Work towards the same thing. I want to welcome Mr. Clayton Morris. Uh, Mr. Clayton, could you have a seat up here, please? So we want to move on. Um, there are going to be other instances where we're going to allow you to have your say. Right now, we want to bring someone who is known to the length and breadth of Trinidad and Tobago as far as refereeing is concerned. He's a, he was a FIFA referees instructor, CONCACAF instructor, CFU, Trinidad Referees Association president, Secondary Schools Football Association president, member of the Constitution Committee of TFA. Mr. Downer has been up and down and all around and is still working and still advocating for referees. I will say no more. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Osman Downer. Ladies and gentlemen, I crave your indulgence and Mr. Downer's indulgence. Uh, unfortunately, I am unable to stay for what is promising to be a very, very interesting day's activity. But I have some other critical commitments that I must take my departure. But before I leave, there were some sentiments expressed that I thought it would be remiss of me if I didn't make this point. Because we keep, throughout some of the contributions we keep here in that we are all in it together. So we need to work together. But as the president of the SFA and those members, these officers and representatives of the clubs participating in the SFA would have heard me say time and time again, my involvement in football is mainly because I believe it is my credo that football is a community development mechanism. It's not about who in it for a sweat, who want to make it a career, or what. What we all do, and we have heard on more than one of occasion and what is lacking in Trinidad and Tobago football is that the football has been taken away from the community. community. For that matter, the vision of the SFA is taking football back to the communities. So I want to, before I leave, I want to stress that I hope people involved in football could see football from that perspective. Football is a community development mechanism. So whatever you contribute to football, it should assist in achieving that objective. And if we take it from that perspective, we will understand more why we, why we need to work together 
for this beautiful game. Thank you, and I wish you a very, very wonderful and fruitful session. Thanks again. Once again, I'd like to introduce to you probably the most experienced referee in Trinidad and Tobago. As I said, Mr. Donna has done it all. I think in his correspondence via the email, he indicated even this last World Cup tournament, there were referees that he trained, that he lectured to in this last World Cup. He was responsible for their development, and he has been responsible for a number of referees here in Trinidad and Tobago. Please welcome again Sir Osman Dawn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, colleagues, and I say colleagues because, as has been stressed here this morning, we are all in the same team. Administrators, coaches, referees, players, all of us are engaged in promoting this lovely game that we all so love. And that is why I say, colleagues. Mr. Chairman, I see you have me here to speak in the section man in the middle if you look at your program. Man in the middle. But man in the middle of what? Think about it. That referee out in that field is in the middle of so many things. I tell referees over and over. I was an assessor in the World Cup, for World Cup. More than once, men and, <coughs> men and women. And I will tell them that what you do on that field influences the whole scenario. Not only the players. Think about a World Cup game with the millions of people looking on. You, you affect them too. So this poor man is in the middle of many things. We all know that other people have their part to play, coaches. But sometimes people should look at that fellow there in the middle, especially that big game, and think of it, what grave responsibility rests on that one shoulder. If coaches, Think about it. Grave responsibility. Now, we have found some things here this morning for both the coach and referees. You know, coaches, this may be a good thing for you to tell your players, your charges. I remember some years ago in a TNT FA presentation function in the stadium and the guest of honor was the president, Mr. Hassan Ali. You may have heard that name. Some people claim he was the best president you have ever had. And he was addressing players because it was a prize-giving function, end of year. And 
he said, players, let me tell you something. He said, I was a football player too. And that is a fact. He played for Queen's Royal College. He says, remember, when the referee is right for a player, he's right. And when the referee is wrong, he's still right. And if players and coaches could sometimes consider that, they'll be happier. The coach said it. Going back to your community and blaming the referee. And that is why I said the man is in the middle of many things. He's in the middle of blame, scapegoat. I remember when I was in charge of a team. Yes, I was a coach once. Oh, yes. Very successful team. A school team. It used to be called the Green Machine. I don't know if you ever heard about that team. I was the coach manager, the manager, but a teacher was the coach. I was the principal. And I remember telling them, listen, don't come to me after any game and tell me anything about the referee. Of course, I could have spoken to them so the principal. What you have to do is to put six, seven balls behind the net and no blasted referee can go and take the ball out of the net. Don't come and tell me to get four or five goals yesterday. I can't tell me about silly referee. Referee what? You legitimately put them the balls in the net, and no referee could go and take them out. And the coach was right, because he said more or less the same thing. Man in the middle. You know, we had a talk with the referees about a month ago, with the coach of Central, who has just gone to Holland. What's his name again? Fennick, Fennick. And you know what he told us? And this is a whole room of referees. He said, listen, I will never be a referee. I, have to, I cannot do it. I will not be able to do it. Because he sees, and he has been seen throughout his career, what the man in the middle has to go through. And in my vast experience, I could tell you a lot of things. But it's a favorite one of mine that I said on TV once. And sometimes some people see me and still ask me about it. A nice story was a true story. As a young referee in the Queen's Park Savannah, as some of you in South must have grown up in open savannas with the spectators right there. The poor linesman in those days couldn't even run because he had to zigzag between the crowd. And I remember a friend again. And from the start, this particular Spectator in my skin. Down are your soul, so down are your soul, so chief and back and oh God. But after a time, good referees learn how to deal with that. You ignore it. And in fact, it actually increases your self confidence. So long as you know you are doing the right thing and you're making the right decisions. It increases self-confidence. I'm addressing this to referees mainly now. 
But this fellow Jenny he kept on, he kept on, and I didn't take him on, of course. But he reached a stage in the second half where he shouted out loud, down that. When you were referring in PSA the other night, where was your wife? I played on a chair in the night, but the years won't know. When you go back, she, I was with she, I take she out. When you were referring till 12 o'clock in PSA the other night. And if you talk to when you go look under your bed, you can see the pair of shoes that are she. Well, of course, I take it on. But you know when I'm home already, look under the bed. <laughs> hey, boy, look. <laughs> I look under the bed for two. So the man in the middle, man in the middle is not easy. Mr. Chaba, sort of things that referees have to go through. The coach, and I'm sure you don't understand the rest of your coaches here, sir. Listen, remember that the referee is an important factor in your game. The coach said that. The senior coach. I cannot understand it. Somebody said it here this morning. I cannot understand how in the world, and we all see it even the World Cup on here, how in the world can a player, Mr. Coach, how can a player be so facing the field in a clear offside position. Everybody can see it. And he's going for the ball. I do understand it. And as the ball pass, boom, offside. I cannot understand it. I cannot. It means that that player and he made the World Cup doesn't have a clue about the offside now. Not a clue. I said, well, what the hell is this? You, may, you must have seen it. Man over there, offside position, crystal clear. And, he, and he's still running forward to get ball. If he had bowled the law, he will know he just has to stand up. Just stand up. You don't have to go back here, just stand up. That's it. And even though the ball passes in front of you, no offside. with referees. Ask referees to come and speak to your teams. We always willing. Oh, by the way, Mr. Isel could testify to that. Years ago, the Referees Association actually had a program that you also will go and talk to so and so. And I used to go and speak to the defense force and the police when Mr. Coach was the coach of police. Ask him. And I remember sitting down and giving his police team a long talk. I remember this. And coaches, please ask the referees to help you. Hear what I remember. Referees are not going to come to the coaches and their teams to teach you any laws. You're not referees. We're not coming to teach you laws. Here what we're coming to help you out with. How to use the law to improve your game. That simple one. That simple one about not being offside from a throwing, directly from a throwing, directly. It's something that I have witnessed. I refereed 
and top, when I say top, I mean top coach in this country. Top coach, Maple Maple. I remember an ICA show and the fella running forward and the coach on his come back, come back, you offside. Big coach. No, I want to find find out something. And the coach will be able to tell us in the some years ago. As a FIFA instructor, I used to be present at coaching courses. The coaches had a part of your syllabus on the laws. I used to be present, lecture, briefly of course, not as referees, until I would settle an exam, which was part of your course. I don't know if they still do that. Mr. Chairman, you don't do it? Yes. Uh, cha -cha. yes, part of the coaching course was a small segment of the laws, and they will ask experts, experts like myself, to come and have a little chat with them on the laws. What do you think, referees? What do you think you tell coaches? about the outside. Do you think you're going to all that thing of a war? Nearer, and then the second and a half defender, and the ball, and you go, so, ah, da, da, da. No! You know what I tell coaches? Tell your players, hey, you young coaches, listen to this. Tell your players that whenever the player is attacking, and any player could attack. And when he's attacking, he's an attacker. When you are attacking, make sure that you are either behind the ball, and if you are in front of the ball, make sure there's a defender in front of you. Matters fix. Matters fix. People knew it. The green machine was never outside. I will go down with the coach on the field in the afternoon and just practice that. After a time, watch. Before we move forward, if you see them, watch them. Reflex action. It becomes a reflex. If you see them, whoop, whoop. what are they looking for? One man in the one. Man. <laughs> Look at that. The law says they must have two defenders. Correct? Refs, two defenders. Nearer to the goal line and right. But in practice, the goalkeeper is more or less always there. You follow what I'm saying? So as far as he's concerned, he must have only one. And that is how referees could help the coaches. Letting them know they could understand the law to improve their game. So the man in the middle, scapegoat. Hey, I told you about the players, coaches, please. Get your players off the referee. Completely. Forget that. Good or bad, that is part of it. Don't blame. Blame yourself. Right. Um, you see this thing about in the opinion of the referee? That has not been shown out yet. Long! It has been removed from the law book. For example, ah, coaches in the law book before 10 years ago, just 10 years ago, a big word for, create, for a player fouling 
a big word was intentional. The referee must decide whether it was intentional or not. And that is in the opinion of the referee. But it was impossible to read intent. You cannot read a man's brain. Intent. Hey, you don't find that in the law book again, coaches. And of course, of course, your referees do that. Is it? That is no longer in the law book. The word intentional has been removed completely. And what do you have instead? If a player commits an offense that is careless, reckless, or with, it, with excessive force, direct free kick. And those are things that are not is either that or not. Is it careless? Is it intentional? Um, is it reckless? Or is it with excessive force? This thing, hey, this thing about, I hear it in the World Cup with the commentators. He cannot see how the referee could have played because the, the player played the ball. Hey, play ball or he play ball. If when you play that ball, it's dangerous. It is careless, it is reckless, it is excessive force, you couldn't even get a red card. So, I think that something like this morning, if it could become part of the system, we are coaches and referees could intermix more with opinions. It will be an excellent thing. Understanding between the parts. An excellent thing. Coaches, lays on with the referees. Let the referees talk to your players, especially young players. There are many questions they could ask. Um, human beings. You know, it used to happen, Mr. Coach, it used to happen when referees at the end of a game, they go to the players just in rooms. But the world has changed. The world has changed. Sometimes there's quite a bit of hostility. The only friend the referee has in certain situations, it's his two assistants. And he got get up now and go to play as just a group. It could be dangerous in the modern day sort of hype and money, games and money and all those sorts of things. Um, I have to comment on this. Coming to the last point. I have dealt with referees for umpteen years. Of course, I was a referee myself, FIFA referee, and FIFA referee instructor. I've dealt with referees all over this world, all over this world. And I will say, that the normal referee is a person of integrity. Yes, referees do make mistakes. Human beings, errare humanus is. All human beings make mistakes. But you know what we try, coaches? You know what we try to instill in referees? Yes, you can make your mistake. Wait, but you learn as you go on from your mistakes. So that in time with experience, the mistakes that you make will be small mistakes. 
and you will not make them often. And the normal referee aims for that. I don't know. I think the young, the young man said it. I think the young man said it. No referee goes out to teeth. No man, no, 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 no. And we have ways of finding out that, you know, partners. I assess games regularly. Why? Any referee I suspect of being biased is out. What the hell are you telling me? Even in the World Cup, we had biased referees, you know. Think of that penalty against Ivory Coast. Think about that. I wrote a FIFA on that, you know. You know that, sir? Yeah, I wrote a FIFA on it. I sent an email to FIFA. He never had another game, eh? That one. He did have another game in the whole tournament. As I told FIFA, that referee was eager to give a penalty against Ivory Coast. It was not a penalty. Eager, eager. Though something is wrong with that man, he has the right to have referees, referees at all. So, Mr. Coach, you do see some in your life. But I, could, I will tell you, they are few and far between. The normal referee is an honest person. The normal referee. And they don't in any way go out to team. Please remember, eh? Your responsibility for conducting a game is not the referee, is eh? It's the commissioner. Let's get that clear. It's the commissioner, not the referee. The referee has to follow what the commissioner says. And I know because I'm an assessor. And sometimes I get long before the commissioner. Some of them come late. Mr. Chairman, I am always, always glad to speak to people concerned with football. And I don't mean only referees, coaches, players. And you will find, no matter where you are, you will find referees who are always willing to pass their knowledge on to other people. Mr. John, thank you very much for this opportunity. Very, very much. And I hope I can help in the future. Thank you very much. Be 
you are facing a bad start, that day is bad start. It happens to everybody. Okay, sir, that's the answer. So don't know who the question does this man. One man, please. Uh, Hello to you. Um, Mr. Mohammed has been instrumental in allowing us to use this venue. Mr. Mohammed. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Philip. Um, illustrious members of the referees and coaches organization football oriented. Um, it's my pleasure to be up the arts council here. To extend our very special welcome to you, I know you have a very um, important um, exercise in, in your capacity as a referee and a, as a coach. 
very controversial. Um, football is on the swing now, and um, I'm sure that in your deliberation here, that you will make you know wise decision for the betterment of the association. So let me extend more of best wishes and, and hope that you move from you know strength to strength. With all God's blessing. Thank you.
about that. Go boy. In Jamaica, there is a strong Jamaica referee association. I can tell you that I do it. I do it. Yes. Okay, thanks very much, Mr. Donna. And um, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donna lives in Diego Martin. And he was here on time. He is a very busy individual. And um, he has agreed, out of, the, out of his love for the game, and he wants to share his knowledge. And Mr. Donna, we want to thank you very much for taking the time of his time. Okay, we want to move. Yeah. Yes.
the next person is one who has been a player. He has represented Trinidad and Tobago for 14 years, two years as, as an under-19 player, and 10 years as a senior player. He captained the national team for five years. A member of the famous Strike Squad, which if you ask me was the best locally organized team. And he was also an assistant coach of the Trinidad and Tobago World Cup team of 2000. He was voted Trinidad and Tobago Football Association, Association Player of the Year in 1987 and one of the top five players in 1988. Coach and played against World Cup teams Argentina, USA, Italy, Mexico, Jamaica, Costa Rica, Canada, and Germany. And we haven't mentioned the teams in the Caribbean as yet. He was head coach of the Trinidad Tobago and 20 national football team during the World Youth Championship qualifiers for three months of 2002. He was quoted, voted coach of the month in 1999, July 1999 with the Trinidad and Tobago Pro League outfit, CL Financial Jabbate. He won the Coach of the Years 2004 and 2005 with Petrochin Sports Club, men's senior team in the Southern Football Association. He's the head coach of the first ever Trinidad and Tobago men's national futsal team, 2004 and 2008. They were Caribbean champions. He's now employed at Petrochin in the Corporate Communications Department attached to the community relations section, coordinates sporting activities for fellow employees, as well as renders social and cultural support to convicted prisoners throughout the nation's prisons. He believes that discipline is not the only basis for success in sports. It is also the best foundation for success in life. Ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't find anyone with better qualities, qualifications to speak about the life of a player than the gentleman who is going to present to us. Please welcome Mr. Clayton Morris.
development. How players should carry themselves, how we see the road officials. Just yesterday, I had the opportunity to talk to the, the uh, coaches in the Eastern Secondary School on, on, on how, what, what are the qualities of look and selecting a captain for a team. Now, I have a document here, 2006 was presented to the Lloyd Best Institute uh, seminar. They had some stu students from UE that they were doing, uh, uh, they were doing, they were looking for, for, for the ills that affect us in sport, right? And they wanted us to come. Well, my, my topic was on football, the critical issues that affect in football and trying to be. And there are all sort of things I touched it, right? The attitude of players, the facilities, financial support, coaching development, media, psychology, which is very, very important, officiating, right? This is why I want to talk about it. Interference, right? That means you have a manager for a team or you have an administrator and he want to come and tell the coach who to play. Right? Broken promises. We sit down and we agree, we get an X, we make an agreement here. And when we, we go on, typical example, I was at TN Tech. And we sat and we decided, the management said, first year the team, four, are looking for fourth. Right? We have all that we have, The team sat up there and it looked like it winning. Now they are to win in order for it to get money. Right? Victimization. We see what's going on with the, the, the players from 2006 with the, with the situation. They have an issue. We could have put that aside and let the guys continue playing, but the victimizing players, they can't play and, and things. So as a whole, as, as I go through this, as a whole, it's every aspect. Now, the World Cup just finished. Everybody knows Germany won the World Cup. If I ask you, what are some of the things Germany did to win the World Cup? Anybody? We could talk and we could write everything Germany do on this world. Did to win the World Cup on this wall, and we might now room. What should an Adam Tedebo must do to, to win a World Cup or to reach the next World Cup? The same thing. True or false? Basically the same thing. Winning is a process. No matter what is a process. Right? And just as I outline here, these are all the things we have to go through. No way, have no shortcut to success. The people who look for shortcut, what happens? They cheat and then they, they, they find them out and they have to strip back the gold medal or what happened. So it's no shortcut. The coaches. Qualities of a good coach. Number one, the coach must be able to have knowledge of the game. That includes the rules. We must have a knowledge. Knowledge technical, tactical understanding. We must have that. Right? And as, as I think somebody was saying before, um, coaches will call other coaches, that could help. Patience. What I mean by that? We sit down here, we appoint, we saw, um, maybe he saw his coach, and he comes and he said, this is what we want, so we saw we want the team by the end of this year, we would fourth last and we want to come second, we want to be to the position. But just like the and Tech, the thing we want to be saying now, we want to win. So we start to change around the things. We start to move it around because, hey, winning is the focus now, we change. Remember, so, so we must have to keep the focus so that patience. Coaches, we have to be patient. We have to be dedicated to the task. Competence. We must be able to, 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 to be able to, you know, assess things and, 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 and work it out. Motivator. We have to be a motivator. The players must want to be the coach because take it or leave it. The, the players, they may be still going to school or they have their parents, but the coach always in the head. And I can share an experience with the same national futsal team, 2004, with them as you know. We pulled those guys from all over, most of these hot spots here, so, so to speak. And one of the guys called me that Christmas because we played and we won the CFU. And then we went to Costa Rica for the CONCACAF playoff. And one of the guys called me about maybe about 
five days before Christmas. You know, Christmas time, everybody want money. And he say, Coach, on Frederick Street, he and two guys now going in a jewel store strap up. And like, he hear me talking to him. And he run back out the store and he tell them, fellas, nah, I ain't doing this again. Right? So the coaches, we are motivators. Good communication. Right? We must be able to communicate exactly what we want the players to do. We have a way we will be telling the players the opposite. We want them to be telling them the opposite. Cross the ball. Why are you not crossing the ball? Tell them what they want them to do. Trustworthy. The players must be able to trust you as a coach. Observer. We have to observe every player in the team. Come back, we have to be a teacher. Some of these things, these, these words I use may, may mean the same may, may be different, but they may mean the same thing. Discipline, right? Leadership, integrity. We have to be role models. We have to, our dress code, our deportation. That means our honesty, credibility, our personality. We must have a personality where the players could come to us. Right? And we mustn't think some players could come to your coach favor and some players. Our personality must be across. We have to be a timekeeper. Right? We have to be media friendly. Some coaches only want to talk to the media because when the team win. We must be able to prepare ourselves. And, and, and I say there's um, three quick questions you prepare yourself for. They will ask you, well, what happened today? What do you think you should have done? And what you will do? It's three things. So you just prepare yourself for that thing. And, 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 um, I sum it up as coach, the first C is concentrate. You must be able to concentrate. You have to be an organizer, analyzer, must be an analyzed, communicate, and this one I like, humility. You have to be humble. Right? Some players, they carry that way when they win, and then when you see them and they lose, they carry that way the same way. They're the opposite way. They want to cough down everybody, and some people say they put the players to sit down for a whole a whole game and a half to talk to them after the game. Right? You all feel free to, to stop me if you want something elaborate on, right? The official part of it, right? As a player, and even as a coach, now, when we look at the referees, right, and I have here something for the referees, the word referee, we look at how you all as you all have to respond. I ain't say react here because some of them when react to this thing, respond. We have to enforce. We have to facilitate. We have to be expressive. We have to be reliable. Evaluate. And Mr. Domino was saying just now about the referee who thing and free girlfriend. The referees have to be an entertainer also. Do they agree with me? When we look at the umpire and the other umpire does do so. You have to be able to entertain. It must be Mr. Dunkler. You should be an entertainer on the field, Mr. Branca. In your own way, you're not taking away anything from, from, from the, the players. Some of the referees get carried away and want to be, but you must be able to be an entertainer. So, because when we go out on that field, Marshall Mantano, they, when they jump on top of that stage, what are they going to do? Perform people paid. Entertainment. So, all. 22 and 1, 23, 24, 25, we have to be entertainers up there, and that's how we have to look at it. Don't take that away from that, will put more enjoyment into, for you into the game. All right? So basically, this is, these, these are the things I look at, you know, how players see the, 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 um, the referees. Another thing to add to both aspects, coaching and referees, that I try to instill in my players, because another critical aspect, is that whatever, whoever is the coach of this team, that is the coach personality out there and all there. Well, they hear me? Whoever coaching this team, that is the coach personality. That is what will say what is, what is about the coach. Right? That is what will say about the, who the coach is. That's the coach personality. Right? Now, when we look at the officials, right, sometimes if officials make some decisions, you question yourself. I wonder if you really see what I see. Right? Both player talking, player and coach now looking at the referee. I wonder if you really see. Right? I can put a, a real situation. Two years ago, I was coaching the Eagles team in the Super League. 
and game at um, Centre Excellence. And it so happened one of the players' girlfriend was up in the stand and had a camera on. We play in Joe Public, um, approaching the Eagles. And as um, Cohen will know, I'm a person like to build the ball from the back and we are struck. And you know in this game, Mr. Dorman, the guys did exactly what we did in training and squad mode. And the lines now put up the flag and say no. Again, as I said, I was all over the place, but again, I had to keep myself on boots. Right? The people in the stand, and the game was closer. I mean, it was, 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 was goalless, and we scored at about midway in the second half. And the referee disallowed the goal. So when the linesman came up, because he was on our side, I said, like, come on, what happened? Why the game won? But no, he can't really talk. I said, what you saw? He said, the, um, as you mentioned, the song was only the goalkeeper, and the man was in front of the goalkeeper. When we look back, well, as I said, when we look back on the thing, and that is why I saw with my naked eye, I, when we look back at the video, we saw down that there was a defender behind the goalkeeper. Because when the player, the players with the two um, strikers interchange the ball and one shoot, and when we shoot, the keeper blocked and the player run and hit. Because he dribbled one of the defenders and he went wrong and recovered to cover the goalkeeper. And he hit it. Right? To cut a long story short, Mr. Marie Gonzalez was there, and I called him the night about, it was after 12. I said, look, one of the players now forward the, 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 that player for the thing. He says, send email, and I mean email the thing. And we went, he went through it. He said he using that as a, as a, a tool to, to, to show the referee. Now the referee saw me after because he showed the typical Mr. And, uh, Mr. Gonzalez. He took a report from him and he took something from me after the game. And he went to him and he told him, he said, well, what Clayton Morris told me and what you told me is two different things. He said, Bobby Bado, and then I said, I'm the thing the night. And when he saw it, when the referee saw me, two days after, he apologized. And we lose the game. Right? Because with that, this team come and score the fellow was in a mess, and we lost the game um, 4 0. Right? So sometimes when you, you, you think you ask yourself if they really see me, right? Um, it's obvious, it brings me to the point that it's obvious a lot of the officials never participated as players. They never participated as players, so some of the things sometimes they're missing because of that. They allow personalities to take control. Just like Mr. Dunn, you say somebody call him and say about under the bed and all that thing, and you're bringing that onto the field to referee a game. I saw it happen many times, mostly in minor league. Right? Lack consistency, consistency in performance. Right? We as the coaches, we go every day and we work with the players. They're having problems crossing the ball and we do drills to cross it. You come to our game and you see, I just use a Mr. Quill, we refereed our game last week and you come you see again, boy, he again, boy. We not see the improvement of the, uh, 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 the referees. Right? Lack consistency. We perform so, let me see you go better than that. We lack knowledge of the respective teams and the coaches. What I mean by that? Mr. Philip just read out what I achieve. Right? I think we need to find out, do some research. We have a game this evening because we as coaches and we as players will be going if I have a game. The night before I study, who is the players I coming up to coming up against and I open it out. Do the rep, do the referees do these things. Think about the team, the, the, the supporters, think because as players, we, we, we learn to visualize the game as a play and when it finish. That's how you see you look at the game while it before and while it's going on and uh, do the reference of the same techniques. Right? 
So you make the, 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 the team a study, you're going to do the game, make the game a study, the co reference, think about the two co the coaches and both ends. What are the behavior? What do you expect from them? So that puts you in an advantage position. Because again, just like the players, you have split seconds to make decisions. Split seconds, we as players, as if you're on the ball, it's a matter of seconds, you have the people calling you. You as a referee sometimes split seconds. It's not like where they have. We are know you're a something to for the tell it is not so So we have to <coughs> understand the, the culture, the teams we're coming up against. The referees, we see referees as a controlling factor in the results of the Mr. Dogna mentioned, if you score seven goals, you can When um, Owen, you run down the line, or I run down the line, I cross the ball and you hit it to the net. You don't run and start to celebrate just so. You might be running, but still you're looking to see what the referee do first. You're looking to see what the referee do first. You don't never hear it, that's how people think. But you still have to look and see what the line do. If you start to run back up, what the referee do? So all you are the determined, right? You all are the game changers. Yes, we have to think and we have to score the goal, but you all are the you all can change the game because if I run down the line and I cross the ball and I go out it's the field and come back in and I score it, we still have to you all and you say it they didn't go off or whatever, whatever you see Johnny be. You can change again, just like with this referee who didn't give us a goal, the whole players are because they said this is what we and it can change the whole thing of the game. Now we have to deal with the players, we have to deal with players mentally to, to, because all of these things happen. Together and come back on one page, 
right? Then we could be, it, it's a step in the right direction. So again, I want to take this opportunity to thank God for inviting me. And feel free. You all could call me if you want me to come and talk with you. If you want me to work with your defenders, work with your team. I have no problem. All right? Thanks again.
But I understand that this is why I take the opportunity anytime I get to go into communities like this and, and at least plant a little seed, you know, so that it, somebody could, 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 could feel, you know, and, and, and take it up from there. But it's, it's really, it's really hard, hard reading, to, you know, to see, the, you know, you talking about that. But it's not everybody look at it that way. They look at it, you know, it's a course. Right? Um, with the youth football, I think somebody is the, the officiating at the youth level. I used to ref, um, coach, uh, well, I coach Rangers, Petrochin, United, Petrochin team in the, in the um, Pro League. And it was really, really frustrating. You go to games and no referees at this level. You know, no referees. The company, they don't have sponsors. But, you know, I've been to that by America doing little coaching camps. And when you see what they do, they know that they, they, they will have, they may have those problems, but what they do, they bring the children on out on one day and let them play. And I think if we, we have to look at this so that you could get, because you really need referees at all levels and more so at the youth levels so that you could, you could understand the, the rules of the game from there. It's very disturbing to, to see you coach the youth, the youth and them whole week and then when you go a man come with a darkers and a jeans and a slippers referee. Or they're asking you as a coach to go and referee the game. You know, it, it, it's very, so it's, it's a holistic thing, it's a whole thing for us to really get, you know, get to where Germany is. They're saying Germany because they're on top of the world now, and that if we had to do anything, we had to aim for this, the top. We can't think to look for Costa Rica, we had to aim for the top. All right, any other question? Um, do you think that young players are confused in the sense that? So we need to tie up these things. 
Because as you say, confuse the players when you have them here developing and you take them out, so they forget about developing. Clayton did, he was able to do 
the last part, which was bringing this chance together, if you look, check your program, which was bringing all the aspects of the game together. And he did that very quick, nicely, so that we didn't really miss out on anything. I have on, on, your, on your program what's next. And what's next, would, I thought to myself, would depend on how people feel about it. Personally, I feel good about what happened here this morning. Um, the quality, the quality was good. The presentations did exactly what I had in mind. Okay, um, Isa, Mr. Donna, Clayton did justice to what we had. Um, I want to thank you all sincerely for coming because the thing, this was intended to, for you. However, however, I'm a little saddened at the fact that there aren't many referees here. And um, I have been between TTFA referees and T and TFRA referees. As a matter of fact, I went to a meeting on Thursday in order to ensure to tell people what I had in mind. And I've been doing that for the past four months. I missed the last meeting of the TNTFA because I was not informed. Again. So I am a little in between, probably when I sit and I discuss with Mr. Donna and his and so on. And they tell me what should happen. It would probably, I would know what will happen. But as far as I'm concerned, what next is as it is on the paper for me. Okay, because um, everything that you see here, um, I am really responsible for it. Okay, so I really want to thank all of you who took the time to be here this morning. And um, if it is that we feel that we could continue with this, because I think this was just the start. If you notice, the program says inaugural, which means the first which means that there are supposed to be others where we could come and share because football is changing all the time and people are going to have problems. So I want to thank you. I want to thank the presenters. Mr. Downer for taking all the time from, to come from Diego Martin. I suppose he left Diego Martin at 7 o'clock this morning. Mr. Downer, thank you very, very, very much for coming. Isa, thanks again for the support and the encouragement. As I said earlier, this idea was born on New Year's Day of this year. And Isa has been always in support. When is it going to come off? Is it going to come off? Isa, thanks very much for your support uh, in this venture. I want to thank also Mr. Howard Spencer, who is not here. Um, because he too has been very supportive. As a matter of fact, he has put me on to some of the people who I expected to be here. I think um, Clayton really put the icing on the cake, okay, because he shared and he shared in all directions and he gave us a lot of food for thought. So Clayton, thanks very, very much for coming, um, taking the time this Saturday morning to share with us. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end. We have some light refreshments at the back. That red container